नमस्कार वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल आर व्यूवर्स एंड लर्नर्स इन दिस लाइव फोन इन सेशन ऑफ सी आई टी एंड सी आर टी आई एम रेणु भट्ट विद यू ऑल एंड डियर लर्नर्स एंड व्यूवर्स यू आर विदर्स ऑन ई विद्या चैनल नंबर इलेवन एंड दिस सेशन इज फॉर केमिस्ट्री स्टूडेंट एंड द टॉपिक डेट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे इन दिस स्पेशल सेशन इज क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स एंड पीरियोडिसिटी इन प्रॉपर्टीज ये दिस इज आर टॉपिक ऑफ दिस सेशन इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेरी और यू वॉन्ट टू नो मोर अबाउट एलिमेंट्स एंड देर प्रॉपर्टीज फील फ्री टू कनेक्ट टू अस थ्रू आर वेरियस मीडियम्स यू कैन कॉल अस ऑन आर टेलीफोन नंबर दैट इज डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन इधर यू कैन ड्रॉप अ मेल एट आर ईमेल एड्रेस दैट इज डी टी एच डॉट क्लास इलेवन एट द रेट सी आई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन डियर लर्नर्स एंड व्यूवर्स वी हैव आर एक्सपर्ट विद अस इन आर स्टूडियो विद अस लेट्स मीट हर यू आर मिस प्रीति गोयल यू आर फॉर्मर पी जी टी फ्रॉम समरविल इंटरनेशनल स्कूल नोएडा वेरी वॉम वेलकम मैम नमस्कार हेलो चिल्ड्रेन होप यू आर डूइंग वेल या मैम वी जस्ट होप दे ऑल आर डूइंग वेरी वेल एंड बिफोर वी बिगिन दिस सेशन लेट मी शेयर अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पीस ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग इंडियाज जी ट्वेंटी प्रेजिडेंसी वी आर इंडीड वेरी प्राउड दैट इंडिया ज्यूम जी ट्वेंटी प्रेजिडेंसी एंड विल कन्वीन द जी ट्वेंटीज लीडर्स समिट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन द कंट्री इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री a nation that deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism india's g20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest the true spirit of vasudhaiv kutumbakam or we can say the whole world as one family with that very important piece of information let's quickly start this uh, session without wasting much of our time ma'am let's move i'm just moving towards you and i just wanted to know more about this specific uh, topic what exactly you have for our learners ma'am yes. so dear children today we are going to discuss the topic classification of elements as you can see on the screen classification of elements and periodicity in properties this is unit 3 of your textbook after studying this topic you will be able to understand the concept of grouping of elements and their properties and also the development of the periodic table you will understand the periodic law you will understand the significance of atomic number and electronic configuration as the basis of periodic classification you will be able to write the names of elements having more than atomic number 100 according to iupac system and you will also be able to classify elements into s p d and f block elements so let's begin so first of all the question comes what is periodic table as you see on the screen we can say periodic table is a table in which we keep all the similar elements together in one group and dissimilar elements are separated from one another how we say that similar elements those elements which have similar physical and chemical properties they are grouped together so the question comes what is the need for classification as you see the classification helps us to undergo a systematic study of various elements which are found in nature otherwise it is not possible to study all the elements together second point is by classifying elements into groups and periods we can make a comparative study of the elements and their compounds third point is we can analyze the periodic trend in various properties like ionization potential electron affinity and electronegativity that is why classification is very very important otherwise it will be very difficult to understand chemistry so let's begin how the chemistry how the development of periodic table is started the first scientist although there were so many scientists they were doing research at the same time the first scientist which is important is j w doberiner he made a triad rule and according to that rule he said that if there is a group of three elements which have similar physical and chemical properties then the atomic weight of the middle element is the average of the first and third element i will show you how it happens as you can see the three similar elements are lithium atomic num atomic mass 7 sodium has atomic mass 
and potassium atomic mass 39. So, according to Doberiner's triad if we take the average mass of the first and third element that is 7 plus 39 divided by 2. So, what we do it gives us 46 by 2 that is 23. So, 23 is the atomic mass of sodium. So, this is Doberiner's triad and according to this the mass of the middle element is the average of the masses of the first and third element. So, ma'am that was the triad rule right. Mm -hmm. So, can we say the all the elements be arranged in a in the form of triads? Is no, it possible? no yeah that is a very good question. All the elements could not be arranged in the form of triads. There were only a few triads actually there were three main triads as I will show you here. You can see here the first triad given here is iron, cobalt and nickel they have almost similar atomic mass. Then second triad lithium, sodium, potassium I showed you. The third is chlorine, bromine and iodine. So, it is also a good triad. Ma atomic mass of bromine is the nearly equal to the average masses of chlorine and iodine. It is 81.25 and actually it is 89. Then calcium, strontium, barium 40 plus 137 divided by 2 88.5 it is quite close to atomic mass of strontium. So, all the mm. elements could not be arranged on this basis. Okay, let me ask one question to you. Yeah, there okay. is a question which of these two, these three triads do not form a correct Doberiner's triad. You can see three triads here mm. group A is nitrogen. Mm phosphorus and arsenic, group B calcium, strontium and barium hmm. and group C chlorine, bromine, iodine. Hmm. So, can you see are all these correct triads? No, hmm. you can see this first one nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic they are not triad if you take the average of 14 and 74.9 hmm. it is not equal to 31. So, this is not correct and the rest of two are the correct Doberiner's triad. So, that okay. is why this method failed. So, Doberiner's triad does not exist anymore, but we have to study when we want to learn the development of periodic table. Now, the second good attempt was the Newland law of octaves and according to Newland law if the elements are arranged in the order of increasing atomic masses then every eighth element had similar properties to the first one just like the first and eighth note for music. Hmm. Any question coming to your mind? Yes ma'am, the very first question coming to my mind is that ki, uh, I just wanted to know more about Newland's law. Can you please, uh, could you please elaborate this law to all yeah. our viewers and yeah, learners? Yeah, definitely I will elaborate and, as you know. how yeah. is it similar to musical uh, notes ma'am? Yeah, is that's it? a good question, yes. As you know and I can sing also, hmm. you can see there are seven musical notes, Sare Gama Padhani and then Sa comes again, right. so just like that. Sa re ga ma pa dha ni sa sa the first sa and the late last sa has hmm. the similar tune. Hmm. So, that is why but it is scale is higher hmm. same is the case with elements as you can see here. See if we are arranging the elements in the increasing order of their atomic masses lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine these are seven elements. And then eighth element is sodium. Sodium has similar properties like lithium. Magnesium uh, is similar to beryllium, aluminium to boron and so on. And then potassium again after chlorine then potassium comes. Potassium is again similar to sodium and lithium. <coughs> Calcium is similar to magnesium and beryllium. But this method was also not very successful hmm. because firstly the inert gases were not discovered at that time and secondly all the elements could not be arranged in this manner it was successful up to calcium. So, the next scientist and next successful scientist is Mendeleev and he made his periodic table and a periodic law. Hmm. Mendeleev is also called as father of classification. He, this was the most successful attempt at that time and you during the time of Mendeleev's periodic table this noble gases were not discovered 
and atomic numbers were also not known at that time. So, first you see what is the Mendeleev's periodic law? He says the physical and chemical properties of elements are the periodic function of their atomic masses or atomic weight. So, what does it mean? It means if we arrange elements in the increasing order of their atomic masses, then properties are repeated after a certain interval. So, according to this, what was the characteristics of Mendeleev's table? It is based on atomic weight. At that time, you can see on the screen Mendeleev's periodic table. Uh, during the time of Mendeleev, only 63 elements were known and he, he was the first scientist to classify elements in a systematic manner. And into that means in horizontal rows and vertical column. You can see these are the horizontal rows and these are the vertical columns. So, horizontal rows are called periods and vertical columns are called groups. So, how many groups you can see here? It is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Actually, when Mendeleev made, there were only 8 groups. Uh, noble gases were not discovered. Later on, noble gases have been added here. And vertical columns are group. Each group has two parts, A group and B group. You can see A group which are written on the left hand side and B group on the right hand side. Then, in the 8th group, there are total 9 elements and they were written in 3 separate rows. So, these those elements which are kept in one group, they show similar properties. But do you know what are the advantages or merits of the Mendeleev's periodic table? The first advantage is it made the study of elements easier and it was very easy to understand <coughs> and learn the properties of elements. Mendeleev also left some gaps in his periodic table and those he predicted that later on these new elements will be discovered and he left those gaps and he predicted the properties and later on those gaps those elements were discovered and their properties were similar as predicted by Mendeleev. Right. And you can see here. new elements. What new elements he discovered and he named them. He said Eka aluminium which is coming after aluminium and now it is called gallium. Eka silicon which comes after silicon and now it is called germanium. Eka boron which comes after boron it is called scandium nowadays. Then Eka manganese is called technetium. So, he predicted new element. This is very very important and very good merit of his periodic table. And he also corrected some atomic masses of some doubtful elements for example, beryllium. It, earlier its mass was considered to be 13.5, later on he predicted that its mass is 9 and not 13.5. He also done the correction in the atomic weights of uranium, beryllium, indium, gold and platinum. So, what then there were some defects also in his periodic table. First most important defect was position of hydrogen. Position of hydrogen in Mendeleev's periodic table is in group 1A and 7A. So, it can be placed in both the groups because it resembles group 1A elements as it has only one electron in the valence shell. It also resembles group 7A because it requires only one electron to complete the outermost shell. Second property was, second defect was that there was no place for isotopes. As you know, what are isotopes? Isotopes are atoms of the same element which have the same atomic number but different atomic mass. So, Mendeleev periodic table was based on atomic mass. So, isotopes cannot be grouped together but they cannot be separated also because they belong to the same element. That is why position of isotope was not clear and position of lanthanoids and actinoids was not clear and there was no resemblance in A group and B group element except the valency. Then order of increasing atomic masses was not strictly followed. So, these are some defects in the Mendeleev's periodic table. So, now we come to the modern periodic table. So, modern periodic table was proposed by the scientist Mosley. 
and this periodic table is based on atomic number and he performed an experiment in which he bombarded high speed electron on different metal surfaces and obtained x-rays. So, he found that frequency of x-rays if we take the square root of frequency of x-rays which were obtained they were directly proportional to the atomic number. He made two graphs one graph was on the basis of x axis and y axis as you can see here. Here square root of frequency <coughs> is compared with relative atomic mass and in the second graph square root of frequency is compared to atomic number. You can see we get a straight line. So, square root of frequency is directly proportional to the atomic number. So, he found that atomic number is a more fundamental property than atomic mass. So, he that is why a periodic table should be made on the basis of atomic numbers and not on the basis of atomic mass. So, the new periodic law was made and according to the new periodic law or modern periodic law the physical and chemical properties of elements are the periodic function of their atomic number. What does it mean? It means if we arrange elements in the increasing order of their atomic numbers then their physical and chemical properties are repeated after a certain interval. This is a very important law and it is what is the difference between Mendeleev's law and the modern periodic law. Mendeleev's law is same except that it is based on atomic masses and modern periodic law is based on atomic number. So, now we will discuss the long form of periodic table. You can see here this is the long form of periodic table and in this long form of periodic table what are the important characteristics. You can see here how many groups and periods are there. You can see there are 18 groups 1, 2, then 3 to 12 and then 13 to 18. There are 18 groups of elements and there are 7 periods. In the first group there are 2 elements, first period there are 2 elements, second period 8, third period has 8 elements, fourth period and fifth period have 18 elements, sixth has 32 elements and seventh period is incomplete it also has 32 elements. Besides that you can see two rows of elements at the bottom these are lanthanoids the first row is called lanthanoid and the second row is called actinoids. So, now we will discuss the nomenclature of elements on the basis of according to IUPAC system and how can we write the names of the elements whose atomic number is more than 100. So, you can see here on the screen if for 0 we write nil and abbreviation is n, 1 is un or un abbreviation u, 2 is pi, b, 3 is tri, t, 4 is squared or q, 5 is spent or p, 6 is hex, h, 7 is sept and s, 8 is oct and o and 9 is n and e. So, if the atomic number is 101, so how we will write the name? You see here 1, 0, 1. So, what is the name for 1? 1 we write un. So, we will start the name with capital letter as you see I am writing on the board for 1 we write un for 0 we write nil and for 1 again it is un. So, we write un and then we add i u m. Hmm. So, if the element has atomic number 101, hmm. so its name will be un nil unnium. Okay. And its symbol will be u is for un and n for nil and u for unnium. So, its symbol will be u and u hmm. and its name will be un nil unnium. Hmm. So, if the atomic number is 110, then what will be the name? 
un, un, then again un, one is un and zero is nilium. So, n, i, l and then we add i, u and m. So, what will be the symbol? u, u and n. Hmm. Clear? And ma'am, how can we write the name and symbol of element having uh, atomic number 115? Yeah, that is a good question. So, 1, 1, 5. So, 1 is u, n, un. Hmm. Another one is again u, n, un. Right. And 5 is spent. So, hmm. we will write p, e, n, t and then add i, u, m. Okay. So, ending name is always i, u, m. So, un, un, pentium. Right? In this right. way, we can write the name of any element which has atomic number more than 100. As you see on the screen, 101 to 110, names mm. are written, IUPAC names are written here, symbol is written here, but this is the IUPAC official names and these are not the IUPAC proper name, these are the official and common names. Hmm. And this table, these are the proper IUPAC name. So, in this way, we can write this is the IUPAC symbol and this is the normal symbol. Clear? Hmm. So, now one question What is the name and symbol of the element having atomic number 120? Hmm. So, first option is un unbium UUB, hmm. second is un bilnilium UBN, hmm. third is un nilbium UNB and un bi bi unium ubu so what will be the answer can you guess ma'am is it d no okay no right <laughs> no it is not d zero is what nil nil right so un bi okay. nilium nilium u b n so b is the correct answer hmm. okay hmm. okay so now we will discuss Electronic, how electronic configuration is uh, the, uh, the modern periodic table is based on electronic configuration. So, let me show you the modern periodic table first. So, in from this long form of periodic table, now we will discuss how it is based on electronic configuration. So, you see uh, uh, quantum numbers, you all know very well quantum numbers, the principal quantum number n it denotes the main shell number of the main shell. So, this in this case the element which are placed in first period their outermost shell is 1. Those elements which are in the second period their outermost shell is 2. In third period outermost shell will be 3. So, this is the most important thing. So, now we will discuss one by one how it is based on electronic configuration starting from first period. So, look at the first period. In the first period, there are two elements only hydrogen and helium. So, hydrogen has similarity with group 1 also and it is similar to group 7 all 17 also. So, we place it in the center. We are not placing it in group 1, we are not placing it in group 17, it is placed in, in, the, in the center of the table. right? So, it has only one Electron. So, what is the electronic configuration of hydrogen? Is 1 s 1 and helium has configuration 1 s 2. So, hydrogen and helium are the only two elements in group 1 in period 1 because they have only two electrons, one electron and two electrons in helium and they have only first shell, one shell. So, they are placed in first period. As you know, in a first period, can have one first shell can have only s subshell which can have only two electrons. So, when there is only one electron, it is in 1s1 hydrogen and 2 electron helium. Now, we come to the second period. Second period starts with lithium and electron enters the 2s subshell. As you can see here, the electronic configuration of lithium is 2s1 and then the next electron beryllium 2s2 then boron it will go to 2p1 and this will be completely filled till 2p6 in neon. You all know very well that noble gases are those gases which have completely filled outermost shell that is they have 8 electrons in the outermost shell. Now, we come to the third period 
third period also has eight electron eight elements only so first third period element is 3s1 sodium last shell configuration magnesium 3s2 then after 3s the electron will go to 3p so 3p1 to 3p6 so aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine and argon so there are eight elements in group 3 now fourth period starts with the filling of the fourth 4s subshell so potassium and calcium 4s1 4s2 now you know energetically after 4s electron goes to the 3d so after 4s then scandium comes scandium the electron goes to 3d1 then 3d1 to 3d10 group 3 to 12 the electrons are being filled in the d subshell 3d subshell when here in zinc 3d is completely filled these are the 10 elements and 10 electron are going so 10 groups group 3 to group 12 then gallium 4p1 to 4p6 krypton it is ending with krypton now the fifth period fifth period starts again just like fourth period with 5s1 5s2 then 4d1 to 4d10 here 10 elements yttrium to cadmium then indium tin antimony tellurium iodine and xenon 5p1 to 5p6 and it is ending with xenon now the important one is sixth period sixth period starts with atomic number 55 cesium and the element is having 6s1 configuration then barium 6s2 then 57 lanthanum lanthanum you can see the star here what is the indication that you see after 57 the element 58 to 71 are placed at the bottom of the periodic table can you see here these 14 elements are together should be kept here in this square but it is not possible to keep all 14 together so they are played separately at the bottom of the periodic table and since they are coming after the element lanthanum so they are called lanthanoids so these 14 elements and they are f inner transition elements as the last electron is going to the f subshell so as you know very well how many electrons can be there in f subshell in f subshell there can be 14 electrons so in this periodic table you can see here that cerium f f electrons are being filled from cerium to 71 so after the filling of f orbitals 4f orbitals then 3d1 to 3d10 is completed in mercury and then 6p1 to 6p6 it is ending with radon so these 14 elements are also called as f block elements similarly group 7 uh, sorry period 7 is incomplete and it has element francium radium 7s1 7s2 then actinium then after actinium again 14 elements from atomic number 90 to atomic number 103 thorium to laurentium which are called actinoids as they are coming after the element actinium so they are placed below lanthanoids and these are called f block elements or f inner transition elements or 5f series so then there are some elements which are discovered some rare earth elements which are kept here in seventh period so that is how we keep similar elements together and this whole periodic table is based on classification of elements and there are some important points as you can see here no. first important point is ma'am can we um, change the slide yeah hmm. Hmm. diagonal relationship you know group second the second period elements like lithium beryllium and boron they show diagonal relationship with third period element magnesium aluminium and silicon 
they do have some unique properties lithium has some unique property it does not those properties do not match with the rest of the group 1 elements and it shows some similarities to the second element of the next group that is magnesium magnesium is placed in second group lithium is in first group but there are some resemblances lithium to magnesium beryllium is similarly beryllium resembles aluminium and boron resembles silicon so this relationship is called diagonal relationship and what is the reason for this relationship because the ionic charge and the radius the ratio is similar in these cases that is why they show diagonal relationship another important fact is that third period elements sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur and chlorine are called typical elements and atomic number of the last inert gas element is 86 atomic number of the gaseous elements there are 11 gaseous elements in the periodic table there are six liquid elements bromine is the only non-metal which exists in the liquid form number of solid elements is 95 and second period contains maximum number of gaseous elements and that is 4. Now we will discuss group wise electronic configuration those elements which are placed in a one group they have similar electronic configuration we can show with the help of group 1 as you can see here group 1 elements lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium their atomic number are 3 11 19 37 55 and 87 and the configuration lithium is 1s2 2s1 then sodium is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 or we can say neon 3s1 so you can see the last configuration is s1 or in general we can say n s1 the outermost shell has only one electron in the s orbital similarly group 2 elements will have similar configuration of n s2 so those elements which are placed in one group they have similar electronic configuration now we will divide the periodic table into four blocks hmm. s p d and f block and we will discuss the electronic configuration and how can we identify s p d f block elements so how we can classify on the basis of the last electron if the last electron is going into the s subshell it will be called a s block element if the last electron goes to a p subshell it is called p block element and so on so the last electron we will now you can see the here s block the group 1 and group 2 are s block element because the last electron is going to the s subshell here in group 1 it is n s 1 and group 2 it is n s 2 last electron has configuration n s 2 then d block here it is going into the d subshell so 3d 1 2 3d 10 here this is called 3d series 4d series 5d series and 6d series on the basis of the electrons being filled in 3d 4d 5d and 6d orbitals then p block here the last electron goes into the p subshell so p 1 to p 6 but do you see one exception is it helium up yes um, i just wanted to know helium has only two electrons and its electronic configuration is 1s2 hmm. but it's placed in p block yeah that's Why a very man? good question reason? it is because you see helium hmm. 1s2 so hmm. the outermost shell is completely filled okay so noble gases are those gases which have completely filled outermost shell and this is the first shell first shell can have a maximum of two electrons and you can see the other noble gases neon argon krypton they have eight electrons as there is the not the first shell so any other shell can have maximum of eight electrons in the outermost shell but first shell can have only two so as it is a noble gas and it is have completely filled outermost shell it has been placed in p block this is an exception okay good question so okay. then p block elements then f block where the last electron goes to the f 
subshell and this the first series is F series, 4 F series they are called lanthanoids and the lower series is 5 F series these are called actinoids. Now, we will discuss the properties of S, P, D and F block elements. So, S block elements as I already told you the last electron enters the S subshell maximum 2 electrons can be placed in a subshell. So, there are only 2 groups group 1 and group 2 general electronic configuration is ns1 and ns2 and what is n? n can be 1 to 7. Group 1 elements are also called as alkali metals because they react with water to form alkali and group 2 elements are called alkaline earth metal because their oxides react with water to form alkali and they are found in soil or earth. Other properties are total number of S block elements are 14, francium and radium are radioactive elements, hydrogen and helium are gaseous elements. Although they are S block, but we do not place them in S, hydrogen is placed in the center and helium along with noble gases. Cesium and francium are liquid elements which are in the S block. Then P block elements, P block elements the last electron goes to the P subshell and they are called p block p can it can have maximum of 6 electron as you know p subshell has 3 orbitals px py pz and total 6 electrons can stay there so there are 6 groups group 13 14 15 16 17 and 18 groups general electronic configuration is ns2 np1 minus 6 what does it mean ns2 as you see here ns2 n P 1 2 6 it means if the last shell is 2 so it will be 2 s 2 and 2 p 1 or 2 p 2 2 p 3 2 p 4 up to 2 p 6. So, last shell p electron will be going to the p subshell n means the outermost shell number of the outermost shell. The next property there are 18 elements in p block and those elements whose electronic configuration is ns2 and p6 they are inert gases or noble gases there are nine gaseous elements and there are metals non metals and metalloids all three kinds of elements which are found in p block elements i will show you in the periodic table then d block elements group 3 to group 12 are called d block elements here the last electron goes to the d subshell and they are electron is being filled in the second last shell they are not d subshell is not filled in the outermost shell it is in the second last shell so in d block elements last two, two shells are incomplete and they are also called as transition elements as the properties are transiting from s block to p block they are present between s and p block all right hmm. so other properties are general electronic configuration n minus 1 d 1 to 10 and s 0 to 2. So, that means you n minus 1 means last shell is n shell. So, second last shell d electrons are being filled in the second last shell all these elements are metals and mercury is the only liquid metal. Then f block elements f block element in which the last electron enters the f subshell and atomic number there are two rows first row is lanthanoids atomic number 58 to 71 second row is actinoids 90 to 103 and they are found in nature in very low abundance and they are very rare earth elements. There are 28 f block elements in the periodic table and the general electronic configuration is n minus 2 f 1 to 14. What does it mean? The last shell is n, second last shell d is also incomplete and third last shell n minus 2 that is f 1 to 14 where n can be only 6 and 7. So, they are when outermost shell is 6 or outermost shell is 7 then only there can be f block elements and those elements which are coming after uranium they are also called as trans uranium elements. Now, 
there is another kind of classification metals non metals and metalloids you are very well familiar we will just take a quick revision metals are about more than 78 percent their characteristics are they are malleable ductile sonorous good conductors of heat and electricity and their position is on the left hand side of the periodic table and non metals are at the top of the right hand side periodic table and there are very few they are only 18 and they are general they can be solid liquid or gases bore they have generally low melting and boiling points you all know as you can see here the green ones these are non metals the blue ones and all these elements s and p block they are all metals and some metals are here also in p block and these zigzag line these are metalloids metalloids have properties similar to both metals and non metals so they are properties are in between of metals and non metals so that is why they are called metalloids now the most important point is how can we can we find out the position of the element if we know the electronic configuration and vice versa we, how we can do that so determination of period and block in a group of elements so for this determination if we know the position of the element we can write its atomic number and if we know the atomic number we can predict the position how so period number can be predicted from the principal quantum number of the last shell if the last shell is 3 that means it is present in the third period if the last shell is 4 then the element is present in the fourth period now the group number group number can be calculated after we find out the block number by writing the electronic configuration you know which electron is the last electron if the last electron is going to the s subshell it is a s block and so on p block d block and f block so for this I have made a table and you can see from here if the block number is s then count the number of electrons in the s orbital and that is equal to the group number. If block number is p then count the number of n s electrons plus n p electrons plus 10 that will be equal to the group number. If the block number is d then count the number of n s electrons and n minus 1 d electrons that makes the element of atomic uh, period number. So, now we will do this exercise ok see the question an element has atomic number 15 what is the position in the periodic table. So, how we will do it first thing we do is that we will write the electronic configuration. So, what is the electronic configuration for 15? 1 s 2, 2 s 2, 2 p 6, how many electrons? 6 plus 4, 10, then 3 s 2 and 3 p 3. You can see total 15 electrons 2 plus 2 4 plus 6 10 plus 2 12 plus 3 15. So, it belongs to the which block? Last electron is going to the p subshell. So, its block is p right and what is the number of the last shell? Last shell is 3. So, it is present in the its period number is 3 clear. So, period is 3 block is p and for p block I told you you what you have to do number of n s electrons plus number of n p electrons plus 10. So, number of n s electrons is 2 number of n p electron is 3. So, number of n s is 2 number of n p electrons is 3. So, total 5. So, plus 10. So, that is in the 15 group. 
So, the element which has atomic number 15 is posited in group 15 and third period clear. So, similarly we can go to the next question an element is placed in fourth period and fourth group what will be its electronic configuration. So, fourth period means that means up to third period the atomic numbers are all at, uh, all the shells are filled. So, we will write up to the third period we will write the electronic configuration up to third period. So, atomic 1 s 2 2 s 2 2 p 6 3 s 2 3 p 6 third okay? then fourth after that it will be 4 s how many electrons are here 6 plus 4 then 10 plus 2 12 and 18. Now, we have to write it is in the fourth group fourth group is which block it is D block. Okay? Hmm. So, that means the element will be in the D block. So, 4 s 2 then how many electrons are left in fourth group means it will be having 3 D 2. So, can we write the atomic number 2 to 4 6 7 8 8 and 6 14 15 16 1 minute 2 to 4 6 6 and 8 18 19 20 21 22. So, atomic number is 22 you count all the electrons which are written above. So, the atomic number is 22 and its electronic configuration is this. Hmm. Okay. So, ma'am can you find the atomic number of an element from its position and vice versa? Ha, just now I told you hmm. again this is the thing that block number and the prediction of the group block number is s then outermost electrons in the s subshell will be the group number and the outermost shell number will be the period number. Similarly, for p block number of electrons in s subshell plus number of electrons in p subshell plus 10 will be the block number on the group number and outermost shell number will be the group number uh, period number and so on we can discuss. Now, I want to discuss some questions with the students from this periodic table. Yes ma'am, hey, let me tell you that we have only uh, 10 minutes left for the session ma'am. Hmm. So, students as you see here what are alkali metals and how to remember this periodic table. So, alkali metals as I told you alkali metals are group 1 elements. So, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium these are called alkali metals. So, group 1 is alkali metals. Group 2 beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium they are called alkaline earth metal and these are group 3 to 12 they are transition elements or d block elements here the properties of d block elements are changing from s block to p block when we move left to right then group 3 is boron family group sorry group 13 is boron family group 14 is carbon family group 15 is nitrogen family group 16 is also known as oxygen family or chalcogens. I must tell you C H A L C O G E N S chalcogens that is group 16. Hmm. Why are they called chalcogens? Because they form ores of metals. So, because they are ore forming elements ore forming they form ores of metals. So, that is why they are called chalcogens. Group 17 are called halogens. Halogens, they are group 17 elements. Halogens means salt forming, they form salt. Salt forming elements are called halogens. 
then one more important thing is that metallic character when we go down in the periodic table in a group metallic character increases that means which element will be most metallic lithium will be the least metallic and cesium will be the most metallic why we have not taken francium because francium is a radioactive element so we do not include in our studies it is its property cannot be studied regularly so cesium is the most metallic so metallic property increase on going down the group but in case of non metals non metallic property decrease going down the group let me explain this to you so you see metals what are the properties of metals they have a property to make positive ions by losing electrons they can make positive ions by losing electrons so the more easily they lose electron the more metallic will be the element so in case of lithium sodium potassium rubidium and cesium when we go down the outermost electron becomes farther from the nucleus so force of attraction from the nucleus of the last electron is decreasing so it is easier to lose electrons as we go down in the group so cesium can lose electron most easily and in group 1 lithium will be losing electron with most difficulty in this particular group so that is why it is cesium is the most metallic so metallic properties increase going down the group because metals have a tendency to lose electrons the more easy the electrons are lost the more metallic the element to so increase going down the group non metallic properties now come to the non metals non metals are placed on the right hand side so non metals have a tendency to gain electron and form negative ions so when non metals like fluorine chlorine bromine iodine etc so fluorine you know it is the most electronegative element then second most electronegative is oxygen and third most electronegative is nitrogen so in case of fluorine the electron when electron is gained its octet is complete and the element uh, the electron will be closer to the nucleus so it is very easily gained so fluorine is the most electronegative and most reactive non metal and reactivity of metals decreases because tendency to gain electron to form negative ion decreases as we go down in the group so there is a question that in met tendency of metal to lose electron decreases going down increases going down the group so metallic character increases going down the group but non metallic character decreases going down the group and you can see here in this group boron is a non metal but aluminum and rest of them are metals carbon is a metal silicon and germanium are metalloids then tin lead are metals so the group in this group when we go down metallic character is increases first non metal then metalloids and then metal similarly in group 15 nitrogen and phosphorus are non metals then arsenic and antimony are metalloid and then bismuth is a metal so metallic character is increasing so non metals to metalloid non metals to metalloid like this it is going so uh i hope you enjoyed the session and if you have any queries you can ask on the website and i will be happy to answer your queries thank Def you children thank you so very much ma'am and i am quite sure our students will be uh, very happy 
to hear all the discussion and I would love to have feedback from them as well. So dear learners and viewers, you can send us your feedback and queries on our email address that is dts.class11 at the rate cit.nic.in. You have to write today's date and session name and the topic of the session as well. And before uh, me wrapping up this session, let me thank our expert. Thank you so very much Preeti ma'am for being with us and thank for your you. detailed thank information you. on uh, classification of elements and periodicity in properties. Thank you so very much ma'am. Thank you. And dear learners and viewers, before I wrap up this session, let me share a very important piece of information with you all regarding India's G20 presidency. We, we are indeed very proud that India assumed G20 presidency and will convene G20's Leaders Summit for the first time in the country in 2023. A nation that deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism, India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all. And in doing so, manifests the true spirit of Vasudhaev Kutumbakam, or we can say the whole world is one family. With that very important piece of information, me, Renu Bhatt, is taking your leave. You stay tuned to Ividya channels and me, Renu Bhatt, is taking your leave. Namaskar. <laughs>